Hello, good evening. How are you? Welcome to Global Success Stories. Hello, Kevin. How are you? Hello, Mr. Shahzad Hussain. How are you? Welcome and good evening to Global Success Stories. Thank you for joining with me. Those who are just joining with me, thank you for watching me live. Thank you. And today I have a special guest who is just joining with me and I wish to bring him on the screen. It's my pleasure to welcome all of you and those who are just joining, thank you for joining with me. Hello Nasrul Bhai, how are you? Hello Saidur Rahman, hello Asif Bhai, how are you? Thank you for joining with me. Mehdi Hassan and everyone welcome to Global Success Stories. I have been doing this success stories and experiencing the different people's career and how they have been experiencing the success. So that's been my passion and this actually to bring their stories in order to share with all of you. So, <clears throat> and in this time today, I have a new guest joining with me from Bangladesh. It's none other than, it's quite a bit similar with my name. And a uh, lot of you, you, you would know Mr. Kamrul Hassan, who is the CEO of Igloo Ice Cream and Dairy. Hello, Kamrul Bhai, how are you? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Thank you, Asif Bhai, for your comment. I'm also really, really proud to see you, definitely. And today, my guest will joining, as you know, Mr. Kamrul Hassan, who is also similar to my name, and he is the CEO of Igloo Ice Cream and Dairy Milk. And he has an astonishing career. Over the last 23 years, he has been working into the FMCG industry. And he has started his career with Nestle back in 1995. He has worked there about one decade and then he left and he worked for one of the local conglomerates called Rohima First Group. And then Mr. Mr. Hassan has worked for New Zealand Dairy and then Fontana of New Zealand and also for Pran as a group CMO and then he left and then now he's working into one of the dairy production and ice cream production industry, one of the Abdul Monem's concern. So I'm really really waiting to see and to have Mr. Kamrul on the show and to, ex and to share his experience of, of career grooming. Those who are just joining with me, please bear with me for some moment. I'm sure that it will be settled down. Thank you, Kamal. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? But I can, I can hear you. So Your this voice. is something, it has gone to the speaker. It's okay. Fine. No problem. So it's I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you clearly. I can hear you. All right. No problem. Carry on. Yeah. So I have been... Uh, I have given your introduction and really waiting for you and uh, a lot of people are waiting to, to hear from you. So welcome to this success stories. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to have you and I'm really, really eagerly waiting to have you on this program and to share your experience in Bangladesh industry and particularly I would like to know that your story of uh, your journey in the corporate industry in the last 23 years. You know, you have been to different corporations and mostly the multinational companies and you have walked into different streams including marketing, sales, branding, training and right now you are spearheading one of the ice cream industry called Igloo Ice Cream and Dairy Milk. So would you please share your story with all of us <clears throat> so that, you know, you know how you, you have been started your journey and uh, the position you are availing right now, how did you come into this position? Can you please take us through the journey? 
All right. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, because I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you a bit of a louder speaker phone. Can you hear me? Yeah, clearly? I can. I can hear you cl clear, right. loud. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me in this show uh, so that I can share a few of the things uh, before the audience. And uh, before starting, you know, uh, uh, I had a great sympathy for last few days what has happened in Bangladesh, especially uh, one of our, uh, you know, uh, students, uh, two students died in a different incidents. I feel sorry for that. And I have great sympathy for their family as well. And uh, I believe uh, now we'll be talking different issues. I hope uh, mm. people will be enjoying sharing the views as well. Well, uh, uh, my uh, career basically started from uh, the one of the biggest company, which is called Nestle, and uh, it was it was back in 1995, and uh, uh, I started uh, my career mostly in the in the marketing profession, uh, which you put sales and uh, you know the I mean, uh, I started uh, working in Nestle in the field job, and that was basically, uh, uh, you can tell it, that it's a medical profession. It is a, it's a part of marketing on that time. And uh, I worked in uh, field profession uh, for a long time. Uh, from there, I moved into the Nestle training. And uh, from there, I moved into the marketing, especially in the brand management. And uh, I worked in the brand management uh, in Nestle for a certain period of time. Uh, altogether, uh, I, I worked in Nestle approximately 12 years. Uh, from there, I moved, uh, you know, I left Nestle and I moved into, you know, uh, Roima Fruits. <clears throat> and it was basically retail operation. And uh, uh, I was there uh, not for a long time. Uh, I was, I was for, a, for a certain period of time. And uh, from there, I moved to another dairy company. It's called New Zealand Dairy. Uh, New Zealand Dairy, I was the head of <clears throat> New Zealand Dairy. I, I worked there for a long time, uh, approximately five years. Then I moved into the parent company of New Zealand Dairy. It's called Fontera. So I have been the global staff of uh, New Zealand Dairy as a Fontera. I was looking after Bangladesh and Nepal market. Uh, from there, basically, I moved one of the biggest company as far as Bangladesh. Now, it's, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a big, big company as far as globe is concerned, uh, Pran. Uh, I was there almost almost a year as a group marketing head. I mean, CMO, chief marketing officer. I was looking over the Pran food category. Uh, it's a bigger portfolio and a huge, huge, you know, number of products. And uh, after that, I moved into Abdul Monem Limited. And I am looking after right now as a CEO of Iglo Ice Cream and Dairy. Altogether, I'm working 23 years. This is, a, this is all about my career. Phenomenal success and phenomenal career as well. So you have been into the industry approximately two decades. And you have experienced a lot of success and failure as well. That's surrounding your, surrounding the, you know, the different professionals. You know, what are the reasons that, you know, the people, you know, failed, you know, because I am particularly interested to know the failure because if we can avoid that, that mindset and, you know, what are the things that causes the failure into the career? So maybe the negative, but still quite a learning, maybe. You see, the, my experience tells uh, most of the people cannot be successful. Uh, reason behind uh, there's a lack of mindset. Because, you know, uh, corporate life and whatever who is doing it at, at any position, uh, it's not about the corporate life, it's along with the business and whatever who is doing what. Uh, in most cases, uh, you know, uh, the people face the challenges. Uh, yeah. And once they face the challenges, they, they, they overcome the challenge very well. That is one of the biggest reasons people fail. And uh, I believe uh, success and failure, uh, the, the biggest difference, one is the mindset. Uh, are you accepting? Are you really willing to willing to succeed, or you want to grow? Uh, uh, this is very important uh, because uh, as long as you took any profession or any job, any of the things, uh, uh, I mean, uh, you want to you want to go somewhere else. Uh, you want to grow your career, then uh, you have to accept uh, you know the failure as well because mm -hmm. uh, you cannot be successful every day. Uh, the career is always ups and downs, and uh, once the uh, you know 
uh, we will love to accept the you know once you are going the upstairs once you are having the good things in your life uh, we all love to have the achievements in our life but uh, none of the achievement come without the failure so uh, to me uh, failure uh, is one of the biggest reason people fail to take the challenge and uh, mm. uh, in some cases uh, the people doesn't know where they want to go really uh, they mm. cannot define the goals properly uh, they cannot take the challenge and they cannot overcome the hurdles in the corporate life and uh, it's a journey and uh, the journey is all about you know you will not find this is smooth journey sometimes you'll find the bumping sometimes you'll find the corner of the corner of the road sometimes you'll find the various challenges sometimes you have to face the politics sometimes you have to achieve the target sometimes you have to you know you have to you have to make sure you are bringing the desired results and and mm. once you are making your strategy every time every strategy doesn't make sense it will be successful it will be achievable or it will be achieved as well but you have to accept both the things and uh, uh, once you can overcome you know various obstacles step by step and once you have most importantly the winning attitude that it can change mm-hmm. the life so uh, in between success and failure i believe that there is the most important gap is the attitude and attitude makes the difference absolutely mm. attitude so what is something mm. is something uh, that is something comes through experience that is also true mm. but uh, it is equally true uh, uh, equally true the ones uh, uh, we you are facing various you know situations in your life uh, in for as far as profession is concerned uh, then how how uh, certainly you are keeping yourself cool as well how you are keeping your mm. passions to grow and passion mm. to grow is very important for anybody as far as uh, success is concerned whatever in corporate life whatever in personal life even whatever in mm. any business so keeping the passions doing the right things uh, mm. rectifying admitting mistakes so many things are equally important you know once you overcome want to overcome the failure absolutely so this is really really a very good point to the a lot of us we think that we only need to develop the skill sets but the mindsets right. that you're talking about in today's world is equally right. important if not the higher so when you see the young professionals of a country and what do you see among them you see it's it's, it's a very interesting question because uh, uh the way we started the journey for example it was not very easy because you see uh, i was i was not a student of marketing uh, mm-hmm. perhaps you have given the introduction i was a student of science and uh, i studied in biochemistry which doesn't relate with business at all it is it is never related to the business but to me business is a common sense if if anybody uh, for example our our elder citizen our senior citizen who are running the business right now in bangladesh uh, most of them are not the business backgrounded that is the reality but i believe that they applied their knowledge and skills and they used mostly the common sense and common sense is one of the thing which is missed by the most of the common people so uh, this is something one of the biggest thing right now if you see the youth i mean the uh, the hmm. who are the who are who are, uh, who are interested to grow their life uh, the primarily they are very much impatient that is hmm. one of the biggest thing and and uh, they they want to want to jump in a situation i mean they want to grow very fast uh, uh, and 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 they don't want to follow you know the steps they don't want to mm. work such such a way so that success will follow them they rather want to be successful without working or in some cases they want to do, want to make the things happen very faster so you see for the youth right now they also It's, it's a big, big. You know, if I share, I don't know how the youth will be taken. Mm. But my experience mm. is telling that uh, they don't want to go to go into the details. First of all, they don't want to understand the job. They don't understand the you know the interesting insights of the market or whatever he's doing. Insights, detail insights, actually what how they can grow as well, and also uh, this another point is that. Uh, i find lack of hard working hard working mm. is one of the key things you cannot simply avoid 
once you work hard, it definitely pays. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow. And I would suggest not only hard working, smart working as well. Because somebody, because in the professional life, we are not the day labor, for example. You are doing the job, we are going to the somewhere else, we, we are coming back, at the end of the day earning something, we are coming back to our life. But you need to, you need to define your work, you need to define your strategy, you need to make sure you are crossing the barrier step by step. Mm -hmm. And this is the, if you become very much impatient, if you want to grow very faster, and once somebody wants to achieve very faster, what happens, once he cannot or he, she cannot achieve, he becomes frustrated. So uh, if, if, you, if you know that I want to go somewhere else, it could be harder. It, it could have something difficult life. And it is also very important either you have the learning attitude or not. In most of the year, they have lack of learning attitude. And another thing is that <clears throat> I believe that our education system is also a problem right now. Because, you see, whenever we take the interview of the people, I find that they have the very good CGPA. For example, out of four, someone is getting 3.6, 3.7, even 3.9. But once, because due to this course curriculum system, I mean, semester system, they are basically focusing themselves for 12 classes for a particular course. The, this grading system is one of the reasons the, the students or the new people who are, who, are, who are joining in the industry, they are not going into the details of particular subject. So education system is all of, also another, another issue that we are not, we, we have the talented resource, but hmm. somehow we are not grooming the talented resource in the right way. This is one of the problem as far as my understanding is concerned. And once they are starting their journey, they are trying to make it possible very faster. There is also another thing. Once I ask someone, where do you want to go after five years? Someone is saying, I want to be head of marketing. Someone is saying, I want to be the something big positions. But they don't know the process because I started my career, for example, as a management trainee. Then I have been officer. Then I have been executive. Then I have been, you know, senior executive. Then I have been the brand manager. Then I have been the senior brand manager. Then I have been the marketing manager, group brand manager. Then I have been the marketing manager. Then I have been the head of marketing. Then I have been the CMO. Then I have been the CEO. So it's not a, it's a, it's a big journey. And every day, every day, you have to face the, face the, face the you know, challenges. The youth especially, they have the talent. Undoubtedly, they are talented compared to us because uh, I believe we are the backdated because we are not digitally sound on that period of time. Whatever we need to earn, what we need to learn, we have to go to the library. We have to, we have to read the books. We have to learn. Because then there was no internet as the other thing was not as so at, at all. But this learning attitude always allowed us to learn because that was not easy to learn. You have to go, you have to, you have to, you have to work, you have to, you have to, you have to, uh, you have to, you have to I mean, you, I mean, uh, you have to run after to know something. And the youth right now, they are very much centric. They are not dig down. They are not digging down themselves to learn something. That is one of the problem as, as far as my understanding is concerned. Mm. Another problem is that, another problem is that for the special youth, uh, they don't want to work. They don't want to work hard. For example, still I am in office. I am talking to you from my office, mm. and my entire team is not <laughs> in the office at all. It's not the issue that I am talking to you as far as live conversation is concerned. Not at all. Still, so far, I work, for example, nine to nine, sometimes even 24 hours. Whenever I go back, I think about how can I develop the business. Whenever I move into car, I think, uh, how can I do something different? Whenever I, I, I talk to the people, I also learn from that. And this learning attitude is one of the things. It can, it can change your life. The youth should have the learning attitude. Once they will have this learning attitude, I am sure they can lead the Bangladesh down the line. Absolutely. And I hear you that, you know, quite uh, several times that you have mentioned the learning attitude and truly that makes the difference because until unless we develop ourselves, that is a self-development process and you were talking about the, they don't understand about the process of going through the different ladder and ultimately going to the top position. Only those positions as a result, right? As a, right. as an right. outcome. So, but right. the process is how we develop ourselves and development happens only assessing our position right now, where we are right. now. And if we, if we don't assess ourselves in terms of developing, 
where right. we want to go and how right. we can really enlighten our abilities how we right. can develop our attitudes how we can develop right. our behaviors and right. a lot of internal internal world it's not about the technical things so right we have the talents the bangladesh has enormous amount of talents i think i think uh, to me we have a lot of talent loads of talents so there the plenty of talents around but right. truly the scarcity of the mindset that really right. makes a difference out of different people right. so what really how we can how the young people you know can develop this kind of mindset yes career is 30 40 years or maybe even 50 years and today's right. tendency of the people of the young professionals or young students is how fast so they are looking into when i can get my next promotion when i can right. get my next increment when right. i can be manager and they think that probably in 5 years if i can be manager maybe i'm successful what right. do you say on that absolutely you're very correct you know the people are uh, people are you know you know trying to move very fast nothing wrong nothing wrong but i always tell to the people who works with me and whoever worked with me somewhere else i always told them i always suggested them please work such a way please contribute every day and if if you can become a part of contribution if you can contribute every day the company will find your destination you don't need to you don't need to look for your destination because none of the company ever want to lose the talents or the assets so you work in such a way that that, that management i mean the company and the owner or whatever the top management your boss immediate boss can think it that you are basically an asset not as a liability that is one of the thing which is very important either you are contributing or not and it's very important it's very important let me share one important thing for example people comes to me sometimes ask me new fresher than fresh especially the freshers they ask uh, sir for example how shall i prepare my resume mm. uh, and and it is very interesting in the market people are charging even 5000 10000 taka to prepare a resume it's very interesting because if some mm. graduate <laughs> he cannot prepare his resume he can he need to go to some consultant to prepare a resume i don't believe he should have a job that's it because a resume is nothing i always tell to the fresher for example you are a fresh graduate you better write in the first first page first para that i have no experience in my profession but once i was studying i was involved in this their various process i was involved in club i was involved in blah 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 i have no experience but i believe i am a quick learner if you gave me the opportunity and if you train me well i believe i could be a contributor to your organization nothing else people shouldn't write too many things in the resume because interview is a different process let me come back to the this issue later hmm. but what i was talking uh, as far as you know uh, talent management as you were saying this is one thing we have the resource but it is also true since as i am working in a senior position in bangladesh i also acknowledge most of the companies right now do not have the mindset to convert the hr into the assets because this talent management is something it it is a matter of nourishment companies especially other than few multinational company they believe in training and development they believe to develop their people so that they can take the challenge and they can contribute to the business and they can take to the company take the company to the next level but most of the local i mean national companies even few of multinationals they don't believe in training and development culture so they don't believe that my resource should be converted one of the one of the good resource not as a human being rather i want to convert this gentleman or this lady into a resource so at the end of the day once the resource is being developed he can contribute or she can contribute even better without having the skill people we can convert the people into the skill people by developing them mm-hmm. that is one of the problem we should not only give the you know responsibility to the youth because youth are coming with a certain dream we should also guide them we should also take them to the next level so i don't want to tell that they are only responsible you know for 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 having or for losing the passion rather i think also our senior citizens especially the employers especially the corporate people who are in the senior or mid level position they should also guide their team in such a way so at the end of the day these people could have developed in the right direction so as far as my understanding is concerned the youth should be persistent 
should be consistent doing the job it's not an issue for example mm. today you are doing 100 next 10 innings you are going zero mm. or today you are doing 60 tomorrow you are doing you know something minus 60 so at the end of the day your achievement is zero so it is something the consistent performance it's not something you need to be superhero or you need to be super talented but you should be something consistent performer for example i give given one example like bangladesh one of the cricketer which is called uh, mushfiqur rahman mm. you see yes he is for example mahmudul riyad they are playing in a position they are playing consistently they are performing it is not an issue they are doing 100 but they are playing very good role for the team so an employer want or management want the person who will maintaining the will be maintaining the consistent performance in the job not something one day you are doing excellent job and and the, and the next day or next week you are not doing so as a whole once you are achieving something it's a banorer bashir bashir khelar moto once you are growing up and you are going down at the end of the day your result is zero so rather you shouldn't do something very extraordinary rather you maintain your consistency you do your job sincerely you do extra very important i always tell that the people if you do 100 out of 100 for example you have a job objective if you can achieve you will get 100 marks then you are you are you are somehow you are somehow can sustain in the present position i mean you are eligible for the present position 100 out of 100 but you have to make sure you are doing 100 plus out of 100 then company will think okay i can take to the next level that is one of the thing another important thing i could say the young talented people because once you are going to be senior someone is wants to be senior then he needs to he needs to uh, run a team he needs to mm. you know maintain a team he needs to manage a team and there are so many brilliant individual who are brilliant individually once they are being given in the supervisory position or a team leader or to run a run a team they are failing so individual talent doesn't make sense to be successful in the next level he needs to the other organizing capability he needs to the people's man he needs to maintain the other people he needs to connect you know he, he needs to the well connectivity with the people so that at the end of the day he might have the objective 100 or 90 but he has other skill he has good managerial skill he could talk to the people he can he can he can you know he is mm. a popular people to the spokesman other person so at the end of the day he can move to the next level so young people not only doing the job but he should have other skill as well so that management can think it okay you run the operation alone now the time has gone to the move to the next level fine thank you very much but the thing is that you have the capability to manage another 5 6 ten people down the line that is very important true and uh, thank you for bringing out this issue and you also you are also speaking about the education system you know when i think about the education system you know this education system what taught us our aim in life or from the society like the taught us aim in life is to some extent you know how the teachers you know to set our aim in life and when we complete our graduation or university life do we really know actually what is our aim in life and what is the purpose of life what is the purpose of job as well so uh, why i'm saying it because until unless we don't know when to become someone when to be when when to accept someone or when what to say yes to someone or something because our graduates you know there is a tendency of yes any job that is okay i just need a job you know for my livelihood i just need a job you know irrespective of what is his skill set irrespective of what he is good at it irrespective of what subject he has studied it so after right. this four five and six years of study in particular subject even an engineer coming to the bank even a doctor coming to bank so so what do you think that the problem is just lying in this uh, particular thing and as a result when we come to the job sector you know they are looking into where where, where and there and every now and there and looking into the you know somewhere lost or what to do next Uh, well uh, it it is very difficult question you are asking because uh, once we study the aim in life and uh, perhaps in the reality of life is completely different because uh, uh, once you are completing the education then there is an issue of survival 
and and the people are moving from where to where for example you are talking a doctor is going to the business for example i am a science student i am doing the mm. business right now mm. so uh, it is very difficult at the early stage where you want to go because this aim in life is not decided by the student mm. this aim in life is de- decided by the parents basically because mm. parents decide where they want to see their their children down the line once upon a time for example chair uh, uh, parents have the great desire that my, their son and daughter will be doctor or engineer something like that that was something i mean early 90s there was the scenario but once the corporates are growing once the business starts growing in bangladesh especially then the then the people's mindset has changed it's changed a lot mm. then you see the every university right now in dhaka city i believe more than 50 university private university and they started doing something business graduate and and i find that everybody start jumping on the business graduate business studies for example bba for example mba you see again they also don't know they are thinking that this bba or mba is something once i'll i'll finish it off then my life is okay but what is happening mm. right now because once they are studying as far as bb or mba even in some cases they don't know where they will be doing the final i mean major sometimes they are doing the mm. double major for example someone is doing marketing someone is doing hr because they don't know where they will be settling because that is again relates to the job market and it is equally true it is very important the brutal fact is that the bangladesh job market is not very very big right now compared to the you know in output versus input i mean every year approximately 2 million graduates are coming out from various universities mm. college engineer doctor if i see all of a sudden approximately 2 million students are coming right now but if you see the government job it's only 2500 but rest of the people has to be occupied as per as private sector or other mnc national company or doing the entrepreneurship whatever they need to do this but mm. it is it is very tough to say you brother uh, defining aim in life and meeting up the aim in life cannot match all is yeah the, the, so, the, the, i'm talking about talking about the purposes of life the right. finding the passion finding the inner strength and then right. choosing the right profession you know the right. aim in life is the earlier stage but right you know the the finding the strength you know nothing wrong someone is studying science and then coming to the bank there's nothing wrong right. what i was talking about if we think about what is our strength and how we can utilize this strength into the professional life shouldn't it be very easier and comfortable as well to upscale my abilities and also the professional life it's very important because wherever you are stronger you need to you need to capitalize you need to you need to put on emphasis on that if i am i am i am i'm strong enough in marketing then i should focus on marketing if i am strong enough in finance i should focus on finance if i have the good capability in hr management i should focus on that if i have the good capability in speaking capability i could have different job if i have the neck in banking i should focus on that i i agree on your point but again again the point is that uh, it is something uh, as far as graduation is concerned the most of the people has a pressure especially when they'll start their professional life they need to earn so earning is one of the biggest barrier because this is nobody is subsidizing their life once they are complete com- completing their graduation they need to earn something then immediately they are joining somewhere else where they can earn once they are joining somewhere else even he or she might have a different dream different desire different interest in in his or her life since earning is an issue then he needs to compromise or she needs to compromise and the thing is that once somebody is joining in a company or in a profession you know avoiding his skills to earn something then once he is putting putting himself or herself into this vicious circle then he cannot come back to this desire or dream that is one of the problem because you know social security is a, is a big constraint because everybody is coming out from the from the from the organization from the education system i mean completion of their degrees they need to earn that is one of the biggest thing we need to acknowledge we need to admit mm. that's why people are talented they cannot put mm. their right talent into the right direction and that is how you know the, the talented people are somehow jeopardizing their their career in the different professions true 
that's very true that is true uh, then what do you see the the current trend is going as far as these uh, young professionals or the executives and also the education overall what do you see this 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 is going to what direction i see i see uh, i see as i said in in my initial discussion i said the bangladesh has a talented pool the youth are the talented undoubtedly the pool is something the the thing is something as i said everybody should not depend on the job because they should they should do something which is called assemi they they could do mm. something for their own 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 business perspective they can do something different different arenas for example right now so many things could be done so many things it's it's, it's interesting for example 10 years back how many restaurants was in dhaka right now so many restaurants 10 years back how many how many different sides of you know you will find so many talented people are doing instead of doing the job they are trying to do something by themselves so bangladesh is moving in the right direction that is true but being a corporate as i am senior citizen or as i am working uh, in a bit of senior position <coughs> i think we should acknowledge these talented guys in a such way we should guide them we should take them we should take them to the next level and this is some of the thing which is missing right now everybody is moving as a silo nobody is taking this initiative to take to to patronize them to guide them uh, to motivate them to coach them so that at the end of the day these people could be big big asset for the for the country you see right now 5 million indians are coming in working in bangladesh 5 million and i'm hmm. sure i am sure what they have they have the good speaking capability or or they have something different talents i am not disagreeing on that but it is also our responsibility then the nation's responsibility employers responsibility as a society collective responsibility to make our resources in such a way so that they could be occupied in the different organization this is something moral this is something holistic view we need to think it we should think about it otherwise our nations our generation our futures our youth will be somehow deprived and they might be deviated from the true society fellowship so this is something we cannot give simply their responsibility this is our responsibility as well this is employer responsibility corporate responsibility everybody's responsibility how we can make sure that we can occupy them we can take them to the next level so once this patriotism patriotism it doesn't mean that you are doing something for the nation for example the country has been liberated Eh? our our father of nation has done the job so the job is over so everybody it is not the government job also it is every entrepreneur should think about the youth every entrepreneur should think about how he can take to the next level they should have the right you know amra amra nijero ki kurchi kina it is very important ja am are you doing something are you doing something for our nations hmm. are you really doing something for the youth are you really guiding them are you really t- telling them brother do this do this don't this are you really supporting them okay go this company try to find the job but this is something senior corporates as i was saying senior corporates entrepreneurs employers they should think about our country because once the our country our people will be generated they will have the job and this money will be pumped into our country as well as a whole the macro economies will be changed the economy would be changed and the gdp could be even higher once our employment or our resource would be in the right direction right what, what i was hearing you that you said the coaching uh, right. right in the corporate professionals you know uh, the importance of coaching you know do you think that you know this culture you know badly missing and also the importance of coaching also you know do we really understand in the mindset level the both the employer and employees the importance of coaching uh to be very frank it is not there is no mindset mm-hmm. because the the coaching once you want to coach something even even for example uh, the world's best team for example right now the world cup who wants france they have the coach absolutely the they are playing over there they have the coach for example barcelona is a team they have the coach they have the messi is playing for example mm-hmm. real madrid is a, is a big team in the world where ronaldo is playing mm-hmm. there is a coach so talent is there 
even they are believing in coaching they are believing in coaching but most unfortunately very unfortunately our employer most of the employer don't believe in such development and coaching they believe this is the waste of money this is one of the biggest hurdles even we are working we are facing because once you want to develop some you need to you need to invest because hmm. people doesn't believe in investing and some of the poor employer in the company they believe that if i develop my team by coaching by training at the end of the day this gentleman or this lead lady will leave the company somehow he is going to be knowledgeable hmm. or she is going to be knowledgeable and she will be living but i believe something a talented guy a skill person having the right coaching he could deliver within 3 months even a unskilled person cannot deliver by 3 years so this is something is another big mindset of the employers and as i was saying employees not only senior people who are working in the different organization we need to raise these boys we need to talk to the employer as well please do develop our team so that at the end of the day they are not the liability of the company they become the asset of the company and in asset once he, he or she gives right support to the company right feedback to right job to the company someone can give six months good good you know success of the company or good things for the company which may not be unskilled by six years so this is something i think the employer should should think about this is the employer part i was saying and the other part we should not also depend on the employer as well employees they need to also think about how they'll develop how they will how they, they will develop themselves how they'll find the right coaching where they'll talk where they'll learn what is the learning process and once he or she is going to be equipped then employer would be ready to pay him back as well more payment so this is a vice versa different situation employer should think about it for their existence and employee should also think about that for their existence as well, for their promoting for their career growth they should take it as 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 a something as a part of their investment for example they study 22 years 23 years 25 years and for their development they need to invest few of the things for their own development so that employer can think also okay i was looking for this gentleman he is the asset for my company so i am not ready to leave him so at the end of the day i am ready to pay him even better so once you are skilled company will be paying more various company will be looking for you so that so that your hmm. market demand will go up it, this is one thing and the other thing employer also employer should also think how they will develop their team as well so both is equally important right and another thing i also wanted to know that what do you think about the culture of our, of our organization in today the developing the talents and uh, helping them you know shaping their mindset you know what do you think this culture how it is contributing also at the same time you know the young talented professionals it's a very very difficult question uh, i don't know i should i should answer it or not <laughs> it's a very very typical question you are asking no there is a yeah there is a yeah, yeah there is an i'm asking you a lot of time we we tend to focus on the mission the the strategy the business plan and the other infrastructure investment but we tend to forget what i see in today in our you know corporate world that we tend to forget the culture and this is big time you know it gives me uh, you know kind of shocking i that's why i that's that is a point that i want to know that because you are a seasoned professional if we talk about more about the culture you know maybe the awareness maybe someone see, somewhere some someone has to start you see uh, you see uh, i wouldn't say the i wouldn't say we don't have the culture of course of course uh, there is a corporate culture in bangladesh but again you need to understand the corporate culture is a process it's a period of time the bangladesh corporate basically starts you know basically corporate starts after 90s mm-hmm. and the people yeah. people who are driving the business in the senior position they are still in the corporate they are still in the corporate so corporate culture if you, if you come back to the last 10 years versus this 10 years it is evolving it is changing it is progressing this is true but again this is a, this is a process it is like democracy this mm. culture is like democracy it will never come overnight because uh, in bangladesh right now still the first generations are doing the business second generation gradually in entering to the business right 
and second generation is something they didn't face the struggles second generation is somehow they got the business by default they got the mm. business either from their from their father from their uncle from their relative something like that so they are basically didn't grow they didn't grow based on the hard job second generation right now doing the business but it is equally true few second generations are doing fantastic as far as bangladesh market is concerned because we should we should have pride few bangladeshi companies for example they are doing business world for example we have a big company in bangladesh prana rfl they are dominating in the world. right now i believe they have they have done the more than 130 countries foot 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 on so corporate culture is a process it is developing but again there is a lack that is also true that is the reality still most of the corporate i wouldn't say corporate most of the companies have the slavery mentality they don't treat the employees as a partner they don't treat employee as a success pillar because these employees are at the end of the day once they are working then the company is growing this is very important thing so this this corporate governance and corporate culture is still not up to the mark in bangladesh even in even if you say go to the usa it is not up to the mark if you go to the england it is not up to the mark since it is a developing country least developed we are in the, we are we are in the stage of growing so it is growing but still lots of do needs to be developed in bangladesh as far as corporate culture is concerned because mm-hmm. still uh, we don't treat our our uh, our employees as a contributor we rather treat we are paying we rather treat you are working here we are paying back that's it so in some cases mm-hmm. if you think that they are basically my success pillars if they mm-hmm. think it these are the people who are taking to the company to the next level or the organization to the next level or the entrepreneur to the next level once they'll be believing them then the employees will have more ownership they'll start talking and they'll start doing the good business and one important thing i would say is my personal life or my experience tells people works for the boss not for the company no people works for the company they works for the immediate boss so immediate boss is very important to 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 you know to make sure i mean he or she is managing she is doing something so the people are getting the feedback from him as well so this is something the bosses should something have an idea so that his team will understand this is corporate so boss is very important rather than the company because at the end of the day there are so many down the line people then they never met even the even the owner of the company they are meeting immediate boss or i mean bit of senior people so this senior people needs to grow the corporate culture as a whole once this started once it will be working together at the end of the day, company will be able to accept this corporate culture as well so we employ employer mm-hmm. both should work together especially the senior how we can take to the corporate culture to the next level but it is true it is missing it is not up to the mark right now there are so many companies who are not giving salary on time there are so many companies who are not doing right justice to the people there are so so many companies who thinks that the 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 the, the employees are basically are the servant so once you are not treating your people for example i have a driver if i don't treat him properly then he will not respect me respect doesn't come by one way you have to pay the respects so someone will get, get back to the respect as well so this corporate culture still slavery mentality is most companies this is one of the biggest problem trust it trust me this is one of the thing we need to change our mindset we should treat we should respect our people whoever our partners whoever stakeholders who are working for the business day and night if we can create this culture i'm sure the company will have more and more benefit down the line so this is something this is not up to the mark it is evolving it is developing mm-hmm. but i believe down the line it is another process of next 15 20 years to evolve the good corporate practice in bangladesh true yes, it it is also neither that we do study at the university level as well the the importance of culture you know when i see think about the culture i see i think about the a, a jar of water like sorry i didn't get you i i i had a, I had a phone call by this time sorry right okay okay so the, it's okay so when i think about the culture you know uh, uh, yeah it's, it's it's okay that we that's not in the after the mark it's okay also that we won't be able to go to the top ladder in one day 
but what my concern is actually you know you know we are not giving it giving a, a bit priority as well right the, the importance of culture that could shape a company's future because most of the company to the company today you know they may be judging today based on the fee earnings based on the profitability but right do they think about the next generation you know down 10 years the, what's the next decade is coming actually what kind of environment what kind of technology what kind of uh, sophistication is coming right. towards because in right. today's complex world what i feel, what i see globally is multi million dollar company even a billion dollar company within a year they're bound to close down shut up just you know absolutely wiped out from the industry and from the business as well and that's where the most worry today you know are we going towards that kind of environment or situation in the next decade or not what do you think no i am very hopeful i am very hopeful because it is it is something it's a transition process you cannot expect overnight you know the people's mindset will be changed you can't expect because this is a journey this is the process and you can also expect something that every every company will maintain the corporate or uh, corporate culture corporate governance but this is a process this is something it is an evolving process it will take time because as 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 I, as you were saying if the if the if the companies doesn't understand the reality of this managing that if they don't follow how how the multinationals are growing year after year in the different countries how they're delegating the job how are managing their job even the existence or the existence of the owner without the existence of the owner for example i mean see they don't have the owner the most of the people who start the company they die but the company is running for example 300 countries 200 countries they are running the companies so absolutely absolutely because of the culture because because of the development skills and other thing management skills as a whole if i tell the management skills so if bangladesh companies want to grow down the line they have to accept it they have to change their mindset and it will be changed because as far as my journey is concerned i have i am working 23 years plus i have seen even the multinational company that worked in nest with they are changing their mindset as well as far as bangladesh culture is concerned mm. for example i worked in roim office they have changed a lot for example i worked in new zealand diri they have changed a lot for example i am working in igloo they are also changing so it is a changing process and as long as as faster the company will understand we need to make certain things for the improvement for the sustainable improvement mm. or for, for the sustainable of the business we need to change these things better i am sure it will be good thing for the companies yes it is changing it is growing i would not say because if you see bangladesh job market for example for example banking sector this is growing for example fmcg sector it is growing for example service sector it is growing so every sector is growing and this growing phenomena and this transition mm. will be allowing to learn themselves by themselves and once they will learn step by step they will be able to adapt the corporate culture step by step because they need to realize this is the best solution they need to adapt it as well because as long as they will not adapt it they will be facing various problems down the line so this corporate culture is something you have to delegate the job to the corporates this is one of the biggest thing mm -hmm. this delegation process is one of the thing is a process because still people doesn't is this companies most of the companies the people are working this is most of the judgment is is being done either i believe or not we don't believe in the capability rather i believe that he is my person so he is the right person he is something good he is the right person. he doesn't speak he doesn't he goes to the prayer he is a good person uh, or something mm. he comes to me two times he is a good person so that is not the identity or this is not something you cannot justify the people rather i believe i believe something i don't want someone that he will give giving me salute to me rather i want he is a credible contributor because at the end of the day this is i am not going to you know somehow making the relations is for example i am going to give my daughter to them no for the marriage something i am not making the familial relationship at this professional connectivity i want the people they will do their job properly this is important instead of making when he is giving us a special salute or instead of doing something oh he is not seeing me he is not giving me the proper respect so i'll kill him 
this is one of the problem in the most of the seniors in as far as Malaysia is concerned. So as long as you want to transit the people, you want to, uh, you want to, you know, retain the talents, or you want to make sure the company should progress in the right direction, you need to delegate the job, and that delegation is a process. Still, it is the, it is the, it is most of the company, most of the companies right now, it is, it is on basis of faith, on basis of relationship, on basis of, you know, which is called favoritism. He's my person, he's my native person or something, he should be in this position, mm -hmm. something like that. But at the end of the day, this is not the way to grow the business. Companies should rely on the right professionals. And this is on the process, I sh I'm sure, down the line, most of the mm -hmm. companies will be turning into the corporate policies. Thank you. Thank you very much for your insights. And it was very insightful indeed. And it's been a privilege listening to you. And I'm sure those who are listening, there is something also to have it, to take it forward. And I'm sure that if any single person is benefited out of this discussion, then the entire intention, I would say, is success. And the intention behind this, bringing these success people's story, the life and the thoughts, is actually helping ourselves to be strengthening our abilities and our thoughts. And, and only then I believe that we can, we can, we can use our potentials. So we can you know, go for our dream and we can chase the dream. And once we go for you know, changing the dream altogether, we believe that we can build the Bangladesh as well. And, and I, I, I also am I'm very hopeful and I'm, I'm sure this country, the potential we have and in the next decade, it's, it is going to be the, the country, one of the country in the world to be watched because it is such a nicely poised in terms of you know, technology, the youth uh, and the, the economy and, and everything. The way, I mean, the world need to watch the country and I'm sure it is going to be the best country because as far as my understanding is concerned, because I'm sure in the next decade, there will be many international people that are looking forward to come into Bangladesh as well, because right. we have such an opportunities. We have the, the you know, growth, the potentials. We have the industries that is growing. We have the people to be utilized. And one last thought on this point from you, and then we can wrap up. And if we want to say something for the audiences as well, and I thank you all of the audience, and I thank you for your time and you know, all this contributions of your wisdom and your experience. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me and I'm really honored. Uh, I don't know what I have shared today. Uh, it was absolutely, absolutely all of a sudden I came to the live and, and, and uh, I was <laughs> talking to you and uh, my privilege. And I believe that uh, if anybody hears, uh, especially the corporate people, uh, if I say anything wrong, I'm, I'm sorry for that. I, I, but I tried to tell the truth and uh, it came uh, from my heart as well because I said all the things or I shared all the things based on my experience and experience talks. Uh, because I don't want to say, I don't want to humiliate something. I don't want to say something which is fishy. I, I tried to tell the fact and if anybody hears it, if anybody is, if, if someone helps someone uh, for developing the business or anything to grow for youth, for the senior, for the corporates, and uh, and I would be I would be obliged as well, and uh, I hope I'll talk to you later as well for any other reason for any other issue. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your time and for accepting me in this Facebook conversation. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure, and I thank you all of the audience, those who are just now listening and would be listening. I'm really greatly indebted to all of you. I may not, you know, I'm not in a position to pay you off right now, but I'm sure together if we can contribute for the development of the society, for the development of the culture, of the organization, and ultimately building the Bangladesh that we really look forward. And the reason I'm talking about this is what really we are leaving behind as a legacy out of our life. And it's only for our next generation. And we believe, I believe that together we can make this world a better place by, by just giving service to the nation, service to the people, and service to the universe. And I, I'm sure that all of us, we can do it from our own place. Our responsibility is not anyone else's responsibility. It's me who can start this journey of change. And I'm hopeful that we 
can make the change happening and it is only the pertinent thing it is only the constant thing i thank you again i thank you kamrul bhai everyone thank you please brother. thank you thank you take thank care you. stay blessed good night see you soon bye bye